you are, motherfucker. I was out exploring, and guess what? I found this abandoned train. <laughs> you bet I did, my adorable mascot, Timmy the Taco. It even had this cool lever. I had a feeling that pulling it wasn't a good idea. But I pulled it anyways. Adventurous spirit! Relax, it looked abandoned. That's right, mofos. In this edition of Anime Games Blank Edition, we're playing a whole bunch of anime train games to figure out how to stop the train. We're talking train themed visual novels, licensed games based on train themed anime series, and even a long running anime style train series. Let's freaking do this! <laughs> First up on our anime train game adventure are a couple train themed anime visual novels, with the first one being Ojusama Express by MediaWorks on the Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1. This game revolves us around getting the chance to board a Vega, this luxury train, for 15 days. And might as well take a chance. I mean, it's beautiful and has lots of things to do in it. I kinda wish I brought along a friend for the ride, but oh well. Hey! Hey! Potential friend! <laughs> a potential modern friend! Konnichiwa, motherfucker! My name is Eric the Everything, and I'm about to cheat you my way into your life. We're gonna have so many fun things. That's right! This visual novel has the typical dating elements as well. The majority of this game revolves around you freely exploring around a train while interacting with a whole variety of quirky and unique girls. Make the right choice and hey, you have the chance to go on a date with said girl on one of the 15 stops the train makes in this game. Don't worry if you fail to get a date though, because this train has a ton of things to do as well. Seriously, I mean it when I say this is a luxury train. Besides wandering around and talking to the girls, we can go shopping, get some luxury food to eat, Hang out in this lounge area, and <gasps> there's even a game room to which you can play slot machines, poker, blackjack, and my personal favorite train game at the time. Okay, is not that cool. It's even cooler. The shooting minigame has you playing the sequel of Arnold Assault, The Revenge of Bari Arm, this obscure mecha game that's pretty fun. And you'll want to keep playing this game and the other games in the game room because if you do well enough, you get more tokens. Get enough tokens and you get a special prize. And by special prize, I mean you can trade your tokens with one of the girls to get your alarm clock. Yeah, no joke. And if that wasn't weird enough, when you used your alarm clock, whichever girl you got the alarm clock from will motivate you with a cute good morning message. Which implies that all the girls in this game used to wake themselves up with a recording of wishing themselves good morning, and I kinda love that. <laughs> you are so amazing, Eric. You are going to get that sassy butt up and get all the ladies, unlike that loser, Tim the Taco. Wait, no! From there, I'm sure you can imagine how this game works. It's just a charming dating sim with the added mechanic of enjoying the present moment train style. My only complaint is that you can't tell where the girls are, so you're just blindly going from place to place hoping some girl's there. To which, if not, sorry, day's over. You can talk to the train conductor who will tell you where the girls are, but even then they might not be there because you could have dismissed them like Gah! Stupid, stupid, stupid! You know what girls? I'm gonna go after the train conductor now because at least she's convenient for my live in the moment benefit! I had a feeling that was the case. So I conveniently found a game that's all about dating train conductors. 
This is Satsuto Musumi DS, Tournament Memory on the Nintendo DS by Tomi. And you were tasked with the assignment of taking pictures of the people working in the railway industry to help them boost sales. And <gasps> did I mention that the people you need to take pictures are are conveniently all women? <laughs> Seems pretty easy enough. You just snap a camera and boom. Oop, I need you to move a little to the right. Yeah, now we're vibing. No, no, why are you mad now? Mm. Oh, we have suggestions to give her at the bottom. Let's see. Let's suggest she should look more serious. Oh my gosh, stop moving! You know what? She deserved it. She just kept making these mad faces, kept moving left and right like ah! Oh no! I'm gonna build a raft of a train conductor. Whatever shall I do? Okay, let's get back on track and explain what the heck's going on here. To take the perfect picture, see this heart? Your goal is to make it flash red. You can make the heart red by suggesting the girl to do various options such as asking the girl to smile, make a serious face, moving a little, etc, etc. It all really depends on the personality of the character and what they prefer. And this is where the game honestly shines. Just like the last game, this game gives you free time to explore around and get to know these girls. Unlike the last game though, your motivation isn't to date them, but rather listen to the struggles and find keywords they mention to ensure you can construct a perfect picture for them. Some girls might want a serious picture to show how serious they are about their train. Some girls might want to go for that friendly vibe, and heck, one girl even wanted a picture of her Madam Purvis to show that she's that mother freaking real boss. Of course you do have the option to potentially date one of the cis girls in this game, but, and I can't believe I'm saying this, it honestly was more enjoyable and fun just talking to these girls and figuring out how to make the perfect picture for them rather than just trying to woo them. These girls feel like normal people just trying to survive payfetch from paycheck rather than some visual novel as stereotype you normally have to deal with with these games. And I kinda love this game for that. It's such an awesome new experience I wasn't expecting from an obscure and random game such as this that I can't describe. <laughs> the most beautiful eyes. Are you hitting on me? <laughs> what can I say? You conducted your way into my heart. <laughs> now choo-choo this mofo! <laughs> Bye! Alright. Let's see. We got a dating sim based on girls on a train. A dating sim based on girls working on the train. What's next? How do you solve this trolley problem? Turn the train into an anime girl. This is my test room on PC by Luz. This Japanese exclusive game that not only went on to get an official English release by Sake Project on Steam, but also get a version on a Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. This is my test room pure station. Oh, and Sake Project also released an uncensored 18 plus version of the game as well in Baku. This is an Eroje, aka an erotic visual novel. Wait, how can trains be sexual? Oh no! I am the Tetsu 86205 Top number 86205 Railroad. 86205 Railroad.
Oh, she's an Imperial Railway 8620 type steam engine 8620 Liberty Blobby Dini. Not some little girl. It's totally okay to not sexualize her or any of that stuff. Let me just calm down. See this little horn shoot thingy with a train? Let me just honk it real quick. <laughs> If you are someone who can get past the very young looking characters in this game though, unironically, this is actually a really emotional game with a lot of interesting elements for train assess people. Your goal in this game is to work together with these trains in order to help preserve the small town of Ohai Choyo, which is facing various challenges such as economic decline. Yeah, this is what the majority of the game centered around, and not what you expect from a typical Roche. Don't get me wrong, you still are dealing with the typical Roche style shenanigans. Gee whiz, I wonder where we need to put that key in this train to unlock her. We have to do what to turn on the train? But beneath all this lies this game's weird commitment to storytelling. Each scene feels purposeful, every character arc really well crafted, and best of all, there are a ton of technical terms thrown around everywhere to the point where there is an entire wiki session of auto train team terminology thrown around in this game. And I kinda love it, it's so fun! <laughs> And these train girls got some movement to them as well. This game uses this tool called Emote, which brings the sprites to life in ways you wouldn't expect. This adds a whole new level of immersion to the experience, making it feel like you're right there with these train girls in the bath together. Sorry, I still can't get over that. And that concludes our train theme anime visual novels. There are some honorable mentions like Initiating Station, a visual novel based on the anime girl theme mascots of the Cairo Slum Metro, as well as S Express and Fushini Densa, two other games that are similar to Ojusama Express with an Orochi twist. But I want to live in a moment with another type of anime train theme games. <laughs>
Even on rookie mode, the easiest mode in this game, you are dealing with a really laggy cruiser that doesn't move half the time, enemies that only give you literal milliseconds to respond, and only 3 lives to complete in the entirety of this 20 minute game to which, if you die, LOL! Watch this cutscene and start all over again. And that's not even the worst part of this. Your cruiser isn't only a weapon, but also apparently your body as well. So whenever you hover over a fallen crack, even for the slightest bit, oop, you fell. Bye. And to make things even worse, you don't even know what to avoid or shoot half the time. Take this car for example. Oh no, it's coming at you. Do you shoot it? No, silly you. You have to dodge it with the cruiser. <laughs> huh? Oh no! There's a car coming towards me! Ah! What? Thankfully, there are some sessions in this game that help us deal with this nonsense. One of those scenes is a target practice session you can choose to run into instead of heading towards the train. This session is pretty basic, as it only features, well, practice targets to shoot at. If you want to prepare for the real dangers this game showcases, you gotta check out the Cyber City Tour session of the game. And by dangers, it just hypes you up for what you're gonna be doing in this game. Oh no, the Delhi Comic Cars? Caps, not the murder freaking manholes! <laughs> The department store. Hopefully, Machimoto Lei J999, Story of Galaxy Express 999 on the PlayStation 1 by Ben Presto won't haunt me with uh, department stores. This game is an adventure game to which, oh no, our flying space train crashed. We need to find a couple of parts in this western town in order to fish our flying space train. And this is where the first part of the game shines. A lot of this game has you going around asking questions on how to get these train parts. You'll encounter this nice old man that will give you tips. This sheriff that is very adamant we don't wander into a conveniently inconvenient sandstorm. And a whole bunch of rude shopkeepers that are no joke. I mean, the dude's got mother friggin' boss music playing in the store. <laughs> and this boss music is deserved, as this guy is selling the parts we need for 100 gold coins, but oh no, we only have 30. Thankfully, there's this dual competition that will conveniently give us 100 gold coins if we win, leading us to the second part of the competition, the dudes. And man, is this session chance, but fun. Throughout this game, you'll have to partake in a bunch of dudes, and it's pretty simple. See this coin, wait for it to hit the ground, and boom! You have to press the R1 button to load the gun, then the R2 button to shoot the wham! Whoever pulls the trigger first wins. And you'll be shooting a lot in this game, as while you're walking around trying to progress with the story, uh oh, random encounter time! These random encounters are similar to the duels, you got the one hit kills etc etc, but unlike the duels, you have the ability to move and use the terrain to your advantage. This is such a fun and quick random encounter system that I love! You see this Pokemon? Why can't you do something cool like this for your random encounters? My favorite part has to be the random things the game makes you do as well. From the really fun and creative boss battles, original story for the series, getting to play the iconic characters in the series, exploring the inside of Galaxy Express 999, and even, get this, controlling this motherfucking cannon, there are just a ton of really cool things to do here. <laughs> Nope. But Genja tests Studio 999 on a Nintendo DS by Culture Brain might. It doesn't. However, it is the typical tactics game in which you and the baddies are taking turns trying to out-strategize each other. You have a whole variety of options to not only attack the enemies, but also increase your defense and dodging skills.
Good and I messed up my dodging. <laughs> well, in Jinja to test you 999, there's also a board game session where you must roll the dice to go to planets and try to collect cards. Whoever collects the most cards by the end of 10 turns wins. Maybe we can roll the dice and the train would have to drive to another planet. <laughs> there is a Bakano DS game made by MediaWorks. This is an adventure visual novel that revolves around a drama filled adventure board on a train as it travels to Chicago to New York. And there are over 59 endings in this visual novel. So maybe we could distract the train by making it read all the endings. <laughs> There's a cancel of Rare Wars places and Vita game. <laughs> Shinkaisen is a series that turns trains into epic fighting robots. There's this arcade game based on it that involves spinning a wheel to determine how strong your attacks are against a group of baddies. We could spin a wheel and have it tell us what we need to do. <laughs> Stupid. No freedom. No work, Thini. There. Uh, the train's not stopping. It's gonna crash! So, what's your grand vision to revolutionize plans? This! What? This is the Densa DD series, a series of fan games based off the self-published initial D manga that replaces the cars with trains. There are a total of five of these games, but they are pretty similar, as they all involve you trying to outmaneuver and outdrip the opposing train fighter. How do you outmaneuver the other trains, you might ask? Well, by trying to go as fast as possible. Watch out though, go too fast and it's very easy to fall off. Trying to do this while tilting the train left and right to make the train stable is called single track dripping. And you can pretty much do this to win every race. If you want to go for the best time though, you're going to have to do some pretty risky stuff to go faster, such as hopping from track to track, and as you saw earlier... <laughs> I solved it! Even better! I have another solution to the trolley problem! Eric does everything though! And you'll experience more than just racing here. Throughout the races, you'll often get funny and overly dramatic reactions from the iconic Initial D characters throughout this game. Heck, sometimes you'll get some cheesy flashback while racing that world. <laughs> Give you this magical girl as transformation and make your train race faster. I don't know how that works, but man is that awesome. This is just a goofy fan game that doesn't take itself seriously, and I love it. Behind all the goofiness lies a love letter to the Initial D series though, and nothing represents that better than the Museum Mode in these games. In this session, you can listen to the Eurobeat songs this game uses, as well as look at the train mottos. And man, I love how these train models reference the various cars from Initial D as well. Will this change your mind? BAM! You just added our logo on a train. Hmm. Anyway, that concludes some licensed anime games based on trains. There is one more hope though, one anime style train series that could help us stop the train. Timmy, open up that honor's chest right next to you. Let's talk about... This is Momotaro, and he is a legendary figure who, according to folklore, emerged from a giant peach found floating down a river by an elderly couple. 
the elderly couple raised this boy until he turned 15, to which he embarked on an adventure in order to defeat evil ogres and bring back treasure. Hudson Stop decided to retell this folklore in anime style video game form, thus the video game Momotaro Densetsu was born. And man was creating this game a good idea. This simple role playing Famicom game went on to strip over 1 million copies, and with the success came a whole bunch of sequels and spin offs as well. One of those spin offs just so happens to be all about traveling aboard on this electronic train board game style. This is Momotaro Dentetsu on the Famicom. Alright, let's boot this baby up! This game is a monopoly S game in which you're competing against up to three other trains. The goal was to earn more money than your opponents by the end of 10 years while trying to get to their own goal destination via a rolling dice. How do you earn money you ask? By buying assets of course. And there are a ton of options when buying these assets. When you land on an asset space, you have the option to either buy a business or railroad. Buy one of these and if you manage to keep it, you'll get a ton of money at the end of the year. And you're gonna need money because there is a chance to lose it. You see, you aren't just rolling the dice to move your train, but also to see whether you earn or lose money at the end of each turn. <laughs> Be warned though, if you're in debt, you'll have no choice but to sell the business. Another thing I like with the dice rolls that determine your money is the fact that it's different for every 4 turns, aka it's different for each season. Spring and summer have a high chance of you earning money, winter has a high chance of you losing money, and fall is just chaos. It could be something like going to a random location, losing the assets, and even scamming someone. But enough about the fancy business stuff. Have you seen some of the locations you get to explore? We're talking beaches with giant sentient sunscreens, a weirdly obsessive amount of hot screens, and heck, even some hidden spaces like music concerts. This game just likes showcasing the goofy and quirky side of Japan, and I love it! And with the next game of the series, it really hones down on that aspect while making some really fun changes. This is Super Momotaro Dentesu on the NES. Just like last game, this game revolves around you trying to get more money than the opposing trains for a buying assets. But unlike the last game, all of the trains are trying to get to the same location to earn some of that money. After someone gets there, it moves to a different location. Oh great, I was the first way to get to that destination, and now you introduce a new destination that's even more inconvenient for me to get. Yeah. Wait, go back. Who's that guy behind me? And why is he following me? Oh, he brought a new asset for me. Uh, thanks, random guy in the lion cloth. It's okay. It's okay. Maybe I can make money back with this asset. Oh, 
I look the same. Wait. This motherfucker is the god of poverty, and you are stuck with him if you are the furthest person away from the location once someone lands on it. And you do not want to be stuck with this guy. Not only does he put you in debt as you just saw, but he can sell your assets, force you to move to inconvenient spaces, and even call upon his ginger spinning top friend to quiz you, to which he actually gives you points if you get it right. That's nice. And that's not the only way you get points in this game. The last game got rid of the dice rolls that gave or lost you money in favor of another system. See these titles? Depending on which one you land on after the row, you can lose and get money, land on chops, and... change your training to both to potentially take shortcuts around the map? So, what's your grand vision to revolutionize trains? This! Who keeps letting in this guy? You can also land in this star card or sea space, both of which give you the opportunity to get a card. These cards are similar to the random events you would get during an autumn dice throw from the last game. Only this time, they are a lot more positive. You got the typical cards you would expect, like being able to move the amount of spaces you want, screw over the opposing players, get access, etc, etc. And then there are the weird ones, like the fart card that <laughs> blows your enemies into a random location. And we can't forget about the poop card which, well, prevents the trains from being able to go past wherever the train poops at. And it's a relief that the Japanese cultural aspects were cranked up to the mass in this game. It's really cool seeing the creative ways they try to implement Japanese culture and folklore in an anime-esque gaming way. And it's not only with additions like the God of Poverty, but also with its locations and theming. The chaotic, fast-paced nature of the game in combination with the Japanese cultural aspects of this game is what made this game so popular in Japan. Heck, so popular. A cultural icon. And I mean it when I say cultural icon. This series went on to sell over 25 games that do the same song and dance as Super Momotaro to test you. Heck, its most recent game on the Nintendo Switch is outselling other iconic series like Animal Crossing and The Legend of Zelda in Japan. And that's the key word. In Japan, none of the games in the series has been sold or translated anywhere else besides Japan. Imagine introducing players from every corner of the world the beauty of Japanese culture through this game. I believe the series doesn't just have the potential to be a game. It can create memories and allow people to live in the forest while learning about a cool and cultural aspect of a culture that they might not be familiar with. So hey, let's seize the moment. Let's spread interest of a translated release of the Momotaro Dentesu series. Because I believe once the world dwells into this party game, it'll make the present moment a more beautiful place to live in. After all, isn't that what life is all about? Enjoying and embracing the present moment? You know what? I have an idea! Hey, train! And speaking of spreading the good words, stay tuned in the next episode, Eric Does Everything, where we talk about the Law of Yuki games. Well, until next time, say no more, motherfucker!